Normally I spend a lot of time in the garage doing videos showing you guys my findings as I get further into this hobby, but today I wanted to do something a little bit different and show you some footage from a recent field mission as well as crash. This is with APM 2.6 and I've probably done about I'd say almost 30 autonomous missions with this guy and most recently I've been doing the same mission about once a week. And the only difference with this last mission is I took this guy up at a lower altitude at about 350 feet and we'll take a look here in a minute but I was flying right over a transmission line. It was actually a high voltage line and my initial theory was that there was interference coming off of that line that interfered with some of the electronic components and ultimately ended up in a crash. But I kid you not, I've probably spent 15-20 hours pouring through the telemetry logs. Now, not the data flash logs that come off the APM because unfortunately this sat in a field about an hour before I could retrieve it. So that log was gone. I don't know if uh, we ran out of memory or, or what, but I do have the telemetry logs. And I just wanted to take a little bit of time in this video to show you guys some of the uh, data that I looked at as well as procedures for diagnosing problems that are published in the ArduPilot wiki. Okay, before I dive into some clips, I wanted to show the damage sustained. Now, really, I got away pretty, pretty clean on this one because all of the electronics are okay. I was actually flying with this power shot, this 5800 milliamp battery, and those sit right underneath this compartment in here. So you can see that the airspeed sensor broke a little bit of this foam in the nose. This guy's broken out, but the airspeed sensor is okay. Broken prop. Tip of my right wing, you can see the little crease there was broken, so a little bit of CA and accelerator. And we're back to new. Gotta love these foam planes. And this canopy obviously busted off. A few scratches on the 3DR GPS compass. And this is the bottom of the right wing. Now you'll notice there's a lot of just scuffs and scrapes. A little bit of foam missing. That's obviously because this thing went into the brush. At least I think it did and I'll get to that in a minute. I was actually not the one who retrieved this. And now the thing that concerns me the most and what after looking at a bunch of the data I'm led to believe is the culprit. But you'll notice this clevis is missing the cross arm that links into the control horn. Now I've spent a ton of time looking at the telemetry logs and can't discern anything reached out to a few folks to get their feedback, but there's a good chance that this thing broke off midair. And coincidentally, that happened right around those transmission lines. So I was kind of chasing the red herring, trying to figure out if it was something electronics related when it could have actually been uh, this faulty component, or it could have possibly broken off during the crash. It's just really hard to tell, but nothing in the data leads me to believe that it would be something other than this. So that's kind of my theory. I'm going to cut to a few quick clips of the flight that day before the crash. Out of the field today, doing a little bit of a mapping mission for a friend of mine. See, we have about 35 different waypoints. See some of the guys on the ground over here. I don't even know if they realize that there's a UAV overhead pretty loud out here and as you guys know that electric engine's pretty quiet. See we're about halfway. Okay now I'm in Mission Planner. I have the telemetry log loaded just we're at 96% of 100%. That's kind of that's where the end of the flight and the crash occurred. So I'm gonna go ahead and play this. And what you're gonna see is the UAV heading north. And you'll notice right here, these shadows, this guy and this guy are transmission lines. So he's actually flown over the transmission line and coming back south to fly down that transect so we can get more photos. And you'll notice that the altitude now is starting to drop. So, and there's a little bit of turbulence we're down to 50 meters altitude and then ultimately we're going to end up right here in this field. Now looking at this data you can see why originally I thought that this these transmission lines were the source of this crash. Now 
initially I was scared because I thought, okay, maybe I clipped a transmission line, but you know, we were at 350 feet, so I didn't see any way that that could happen. Then secondly, the theory was uh, the transmission line caused interference. So let me show you why I don't believe that to be the case. Now a cool feature of mission planner is I can take this telemetry log and then create a KML file. So I've already done that and let me show you the results. Now this is the same flight that we just saw via the telemetry log and you'll notice the transmission line tower here, here, and then it goes up through here. So you'll see here pretty close to it might have been over it. This one I'm definitely over it and then on this third pass I'm way past it and then I come over it and then end up in the field. So that's clue number one that tells me that I did not clip the transmission line. Okay now these are a series of photos that were taken from the camera prior to the crash. So you can see we're kind of coming around like you saw in Mission Planner and then you'll notice right here are the transmission lines and you can tell that we have quite a bit of clearance above them. And so there are the transmission lines again and you'll notice that uh, the image is very blurry and then another blurry image another and then finally we're on the ground the final thing that I did was I used this wiki page it's actually for APM Copter so not all of this applies but it still gives some good tips on how to look through your data to find any issues now like I said before I didn't have the data flash logs so I couldn't do all of this but I did do as much as I could and so I just wanted to demonstrate uh, what I did for GPS glitches to rule that out of the equation. So in Mission Planner once again I've loaded the telemetry log and you can actually graph any of these parameters it's actually pretty amazing so to do the proper GPS graph we want to graph this EPH and satellites visible as described in the wiki and now let me go ahead and zoom in on this it says in the wiki a uh, value of 150 or lower is good for the EPH, so that looks okay. And then number of satellites, you can see that at the time of the crash, which is where this ended, there were 12 satellites, so that's really good. So I poured through all this data and came to the realization that I wasn't able to find anything that could just be my lack of experience, or hopefully I've you know, exhausted all options and it did ultimately turn out to be the clevis on the servo. One test that I did when I got back to the garage is I powered everything back up, flipped to my different flight modes. I could operate the throttle and the flaps just fine in manual mode. When I switched to fly-by-wire, everything worked properly. So it tells me everything's okay. I'm still going to get it out to the field this weekend just to test to make sure autopilot is fine. So all that leads me back to this little cheap nylon clevis. I really believe that this is the culprit and what I'm going to do in the future is not fly with these anymore. I've seen guys that have used these Z-bins and these push rods from end to end without having to mess with a clevis. So I might do that or I've thought about getting some metal clevises. As I mentioned in the beginning, I wasn't the one to recover my UAV and here in just a second I'll show you a sequence of photos that are pretty entertaining. There are a group of construction guys that are working out on the property that I've been flying. You saw earlier this is how it ended upside down. Now let me just scroll to the next photo and you see this little head pop up and I'll just shift through these pretty quickly but you can see there's these group of guys that basically found this UFO laying in the field and <laughs> taking a look at it. So anyway, I just wanted to share these. I, I found that despite all the chaos and frustration and doubt, I definitely enjoy looking at these photos. Here's actually a really good photo from that flight. So I know this was a long and drawn out video, but I wanted to share pretty much everything that I've gone through to diagnose this problem because maybe one day hopefully it doesn't happen to you but if it does you definitely have some options to explore with APM. I do have a question posted on DIY drones. I'll put a link in the comments below. If you feel that you can chime in please do. I've yet to receive any responses over there. 
I appreciate you guys following along. I hope this was somewhat useful. And until next time, thanks for watching.